Hallelujah. Yeah. Everything. And no good thing will he withhold from you that walks uprightly. Come on, you better say amen. amen. Nothing. Nothing will he withhold. Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I sing that song till I'm off key. I got a friend. His name is Jesus. Jesus. Learn to say his name with reverence. Jesus. 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 So I had a dream the other night. I dreamed this great airplane came by and it was picking up people. It was bigger than the presidential plane. But it was putting the remnant on the plane. And there was an angel, I guess was the pilot, and he said, oh, this plane has other features on it. <laughs> he said, it can, can extend out in the front. And it's got hidden places in it where those that have walked a little further can move into it. And then it had compartments that came out on the side. <clears throat> they were like ports where it has hidden manna. Of things that people have done for God and has never been honored yet. And it didn't have just one, it was like another wing came out, but it was five wings or four wings on each side. I thought, man, will this plane get there? It was already in the air. <laughs> and then he showed me the front end of it just extended like glass. It was clear. And I saw all this, it wasn't like Wealth, but it was the riches of his glory. I go to bed at night. Lord, you want to show me something tonight? <laughs> Lord, I would like to see something tonight. You never sleep. Come on. God wants to reveal a facet that you haven't seen, that you haven't experienced. Hallelujah. Lord, you're going to cause all those people in the White House to get a little glimpse of the handwriting on the wall. <laughs> to get a little glimpse. How many of you ever had a dream and you're glad when you woke up? Come on, be honest. You're almost tired when you woke up. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for warning me. Thank you, Lord, for revealing Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and give him a little report. Take a paper out. These are the things I don't like about myself. What do you think? I notice he never tells me, but he'll let me experience it. That was the thing you wanted removed. Come on. That was the thing you wanted out of your life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And I'm seeing many of you right now. God's going to put you out in deep waters. I see these waves are so high, but they're not reckless. And I see your, like the sails are billowing in the most gentle wind as it's carrying you out into a new destiny, into a new place of his presence. Oh, hallelujah. But you got to warn him, it's not all those other things. They'll come with it, honey. They'll come with the winds. Come on. They'll come with the waves. Every time they go out and come in, they'll bring the treasure into your life. But I see that. I see new discoveries in the spirit.
I long to see the face of my Savior. It won't be long now. It won't be long. These many years I've served him in pleasure, in measure. But soon his beauty I will behold. His glorious face I shall behold. His majesty shall unfold. And in his presence I'll forever stand. Remain by his. Take me a little higher, Richard. I long to see. Put a little more glory on those keys. still too low for me. Hallelujah. There's a place God wants to bring us to this morning. I long to see Just let me start it. Okay? I long to see the face of my Savior, it won't be long now, it won't be long. His glorious face I shall behold, and His majesty I shall stand. I long to see the face of my Savior. It won't be long now. It won't be long. His glorious face I shall behold. His majesty it shall be told. It shall be told. You see, it's wonderful when we come through the gates of praise. Thanksgiving and into the courts of praise. But then when you come, Into his majesty, there's a difference. Makes you, that's what a worshiper does. Are you listening? But you get, makes you a different person. Real worship is just not having a nice voice. Have all the beats and rhythms and sounds and whistles. The presence of the Lord comes in and you change forever. You got to know this. When the glory comes in this room, you're not the same as when you came in two hours ago. You don't think the same. You don't want the same. Or it hasn't done its perfect work. His glorious face I shall His majesty untold, and in his presence 
I'll forever stand remade by his almighty hand. So if you should go away this morning and someone should ask you what happened here, could you describe the greatness of what the Lord has done? Not in earthly details the way they are doing today. They want to write a song, so they put a few rhymes together, but never experience the lines that are written. The eyes are the windows of your soul, and God lets us behold his majesty all day long. We comprehend what he's doing in that beauty. I long to see, tell him I long to see, I long to see, and they'll say, is this the carpenter's son? Is this Esther's daughter? Is this Virginia's brother? His majesty, I shall behold, and his glory, it will be told, and in his presence, I'll forever stand, remade by his Almighty hand. So he said to me when I came out here, he said, you only need me as an audience. Come on. How many, how many know the story of Walmart? 14 years, and most of it in solitaire, in the dark. So he preached to Jesus every night true story. And years later, God took his voice, the eternity. He preached to the angels and to Jesus and took it to other prisons and preached to the people in the prison houses. And they met him and told him the sermon that he preached. It echoed and echoed and echoed. You know, you know we're just trying to get him out of prison. God's trying to do something eternal and wonderful. What do you think heaven's going to be like? Few people go there and can come back because they don't read enough of the Bible. The Lord told my mother that. He took her to heaven and he brought her back and he said, you're not going to be able to explain much of what you've seen because you have not read enough of the Bible. It's in the word. It just has to come alive. It's written, but it's got to come alive. Do you understand? It's all there in the book of Revelation and the Song of Solomon and Ezekiel and Matthew 24. Just tell the Lord to explain it to you. And when you get through, you look like a pretzel. Been out of shape. The ugliest thing you've ever seen. Where's the beauty of this thing? Man, they can stand adversity. <laughs> you say, where are you coming from? I don't sleep much at night. Uh, maybe two hours. Most nights. I'm having a visitation. A wrestling match. You gotta see my bed. <laughs> Gets made once in a while. I don't mean I'm having nightmares. I'm getting victories. Come on, we're getting victories. We're getting victories. Lord, anything you want to tell me? I promise I won't get upset, and you better mean it. 
Oh, when you think you won't, he says something and arrests you for about a week, two weeks, three weeks. And you come around the mountain and say, I'm ready to hear a little more. I got myself together here. Come on, I'm talking to you about God. It's about God, honey. It's not about prospering and getting this and getting that. How much of God is in you? How much do you want? How much are you ready for? Give him the key. Hallelujah. And he can get through the door. He said, I stand and I knock. You know, in the middle, in the first chapter of, of Revelation, he's, John is describing him from his hair to his toes. And by the third chapter, he's knocking on the door. He can't get in. Read it. Take it all, all the keys, everything. Take the chain with it. Hallelujah. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. So Moses said, I want to see your glory. You get this. You know what he was saying to me? He said, you go over there to that cliff, to that rock. This is a real mystery. I read this and I'm still trying to figure it out. If you really want to know who I am, you got to hide yourself in me, from me, to know me. Did you get that? I'm still studying that. So God is wanting to reveal some truths. And I asked the Lord, would he send somebody into this room that could prophesy? And he sent our little friend right here, this little red-headed friend. And she gave a word. And the Lord said, I'm going to bring you into my room of tears. Dee can tell you. I'm, I'm at the table trying to eat, and I'm crying. And I'm weeping. And I've forgotten about the room of tears. The intercession is going on. And weeping, and weeping, and wondering if I did, the, did what I could. Did I do everything? I know God is not sitting there with a big whip stick and telling you he's going to whip you if you don't do better. I'm not saying that. I'm saying there's more. I mean, there's more than just pudding and ice cream. And ice cream is very good. We used to teach that to the children. But Jesus is better than ice cream. That's about the sweetest thing you can eat. And he's the sweetest thing I know. He never forgets. And so he's, his eyes are all around us, looking to see if all those valves are open. I'm talking about those VOWS that we promised him. That they're all open. And he said, This is the day when I'm going to open the heavens. When that boy came back to that table, he said, I forgot something that happened today. And he used the word blessing in a moment. He came to bring us our two little chocolate mints. We were waiting for them. <laughs> and I said, I, we're not here to convince you of something religious. But we're here to tell you that you have a destiny and we're going to pray till you get it. You better be bold. He said to Joshua, you better be bold. You better be strong. Three times he said it to him. For the Lord thy God is with you. He said one other thing. Be bold, be strong. What was that other word? Courageous. 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 Man, that sounds like a windstorm coming. Courageous. Courageous. You know what's in the word courageous? Rage. Courageous. Be strong. So when I came to Arizona 22 years ago, when I turned off a of 40 on the 17, I heard these words. I'm with another girl. And he said, here comes 
by Caleb and Joshua. Huh? <laughs> How would you like to be called a, get, a Caleb when you're a female? <laughs> and she was too. And I knew it meant something. Do you understand? And I knew my mountain was here. Where's your mountain? Where is your mountain? Where is the mountain of the Lord? Are we climbing into it today? There's a place where he says, nothing will harm you in my holy mountain. That's the scripture. Nothing shall harm you. But why? Because you see the governments from God with uh, his viewpoint. What he thinks, how he feels. And there's nowhere in the Bible that he's, Jesus is saying, oh, Father, we got a problem. How are we going to take care of this? They never have a problem. Hallelujah. 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 I'm not going to say anymore. I got before the Lord and I want you to do it. Lord, I got to have more of you. There's more of you. I've only touched, you told Ruth Heflin when she was in Jerusalem. She wanted to find a new way to have intercession. And the Lord said, all right, I'm going to show you how to do it. He said, you've only touched the tip of the iceberg. You know how you know you've touched the mountain because things begin to melt. Come on. Yeah. The flow begins to come in your life. The victory begins to come. You have no more ideas of your own. You only have the mind of Christ. You only have his mind. And then when you have his mind, you know, you know where the blessing is that you need for that moment. Glory to God. I had something to happen to me recently. I mean, I have something every day. D will tell you every day. If I don't get something, I'll go after it. Lord, there must be a jewel for today. Come on, if he's dressing the bride, there's got to be a jewel for today. Come on, are you listening to me? There's something else to put on that wedding now. And I said to the Lord, there must be something that you want to tell me, something I need to know. You know everything. You know everything. You know everything, and you want to reveal something to somebody sometime. And I had a little niece that sent me a large check. Then she sent me a bigger check. And it wasn't like her. She said, I want her to do it. And the Lord said to me, do you remember when you took care of her when you were 11 years old? A whole summer. I went at 11 years of age. There were two of them. Twins. A sister. Only bought two dozen diapers. You know what that meant? I had to wash them every day. And I made formulas. And I bathed those babies. She trusted me 11 years of age. A whole summer. I stayed at her house. And I wanted to go home. Well, that's normal for an 11-year-old girl. And I cried. I wanted to go home. I've been there all summer working. I didn't get any money. I got food and a place to sleep. I wasn't looking for money. We knew our call in life. There were nine of us children. And the Lord said, this is payday for taking care of those children for two months. It gathered interest. Are you listening? Yeah. I'm trying to tell you something. Okay. I'm trying to tell you something. So I said to the Lord, I don't want to write hundred dollar checks. I want to write thousand dollar checks. Come on. I haven't got it up to ten thousand yet. Oh yes, I have. We did, didn't we? We got it to twenty thousand. And you can remind the Lord, Lord, that twenty thousand dollars, I didn't keep one penny of it. I gave it away. Not one penny, Lord. I didn't get one penny. Because I want to see more than your hand. Are you listening to me? Amen. It's not the hand. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart. I want to know your heart, how it beats for me. You said your thoughts are toward me by thousands, by ten thousands. You said your thoughts are many, are many. He has plans that he wants to resurrect in some of your lives. And you may feel like you missed it. You missed that moment. But he's a merciful God and he'll bring it around again. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So I saw these ten places. They're nine places now. I saw where Ruth Heflin had left for people to come with their anointing to move in the earth. I saw ten parking places. Mike Maiden took one of them. He was driving a Hemi Dodge. You ever drove in a Hemi Dodge? It'll pass everything on the road. And it's got a certain sound. Have you got a sound about you? On the day of Pentecost, there was a sound. It came from heaven. And that sound in you is going to quicken and awaken the dead. That sound in you is going to charge. Those Hemis are called superchargers. And when they come down the road, my brother drove one and nobody ever passed him. We could just be riding along, minding our business, and somebody would zoom past him, and he'd take off. And I said, David, they're not trying to race with you. And he was going to pass them. And I seen him bury his spin on the drive in the car, and I hit my face. I said, oh, God, my life is in your hands. I'm telling you, God's going to supercharge you. Hallelujah. Supercharge you. Boy, that sound is rumbling inside. It's going to move mountains. Come on, it's going to move in the earth. It's going to move everywhere you go. The sound of thunder is going to shake the heavens. I'm not just talking about you. I'm talking about the God that is in you. That when you speak, things come to order and come to place. And are move forward by two or three or five paces. And you can talk to God like this. Lord, I don't want to go to heaven. I tell you, you have, you have given me everything you've wanted to give me. I don't care if I'm so old, I'm walking on a cane or a crutch. I want that place beside you. And when he's saying, just hide yourself in me, you got the place. Hide yourself in me. He's the hiding place. And those are the people that are hidden in the glory. <coughs> hidden in the glory. A hidden people, the world is going to know. A hidden people, God's going to show. They're people that's waited until His power has come and filled their lives. It's his power. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Fill their lives with him. Fill your life with his power. That means his holy presence. You just can't say presence, his holy presence. Holy presence. Are you listening? His holy presence. We came back from Israel and we upset the people so bad, so much at the New York airport that they held our luggage for four hours and kept us from catching our next plane. They got upset. Oh, they just come from Israel. Upset. You gotta upset some people. They've been too comfortable. And Jesus and his two friends came down on the plains of Mamre. And they're gonna visit Sodom. And he said, Shall we do this thing without informing Abraham? And God is not gonna do anything that you're not gonna know at first. If you're a prophetic person, you better know what's going to happen. A hidden people, the world shall know. A hidden people, his glory shall know. A hidden people. Who's waited until his power has come 
their lives to fill. And listen, listen to me. The church has got to catch this. When this glory comes upon you, you're not about a lot of talk after it settles down. Are you listening to me? There's a difference from galloping in the praise and then when the worship comes because it's doing an eternal work. It subdues those things that are running inside and puts a rain on them. And it's so awesome. You don't want to talk. You're having an audience with the Lord. Are you listening to me? I'm being careful with you. That's why Ruth Heflin had the anointing she had. She would only say so much because other words will ensnare you and it will steal that glory that's just come into your life. It's carnal. When Ruth got to, with her last, she always had a song for every message. She'd say, give me a minor key. Minor key. Minor. You want to give me a minor key? Hallelujah. That means you've come into the priesthood. You've come into the royal place. You've come but your guard. You're standing face to face. Oh, you're looking into his eyes where there's always great surprise. Oh, the glory realm. Oh, it's the place where few will find themselves to have been. Sister Ruth, I'm telling you, when the glory comes into your life, you're careful not to disturb it. It's an often an awesome place to know that you've offended the presence of the Lord. Whom the glory. Come on, lift your voice.